This is the Truth Frequency Radio Network. We are TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. I would remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. America's evil genius, Travis Cook, back with you once again for another week of eye gouging, crotch kicking, no holes barred political discussion right here on TruthFrequencyRadio.com, 90.7 FM in Denver, 97.3 FM in Eugene, Oregon. Great to be back with you once again as we come to you from the intellectual dungeon here on the outskirts of St. Louis, Missouri. Great to be back with you wherever you are around the world or here within the borders of this, the greatest nation to ever trod the face of the earth. Great to speak with you once again. And one thing I always kind of notice or or I always think about from time to time, there's so many times in this world that we get into these political battles or cultural battles or whatever and we take a position and we fight and we make whatever whatever decisions we're going to make we we employ whatever strategies we're going to employ and then some other hot button issue comes along or some other fight comes along and then we immediately go to that and then another fight comes on after that and then we we go to that one we just kind of go from fight to fight to fight to fight to fight And we very rarely actually take a step back and look at the decisions we made three or four fights ago, three or four years ago, five or six years ago, and take that moment to say, okay, how did that work out? Did did that do what we set out for it to do? Did we accomplish what we actually wanted to accomplish when we were in that fight three or four or five or six or ten years ago? Is America better off for the decision we made during that one fight way back when? We don't always take the opportunity and the time to look at that and to kind of learn from our own past, if you will. To learn from our own successes or failures. We don't often do that. Because let's face it, the world, not only the political world, but the cultural world, the world as a whole, moves at a lightning quick pace. Nobody doubts that. And the fight you're in today might be quite different than the fight you're in tomorrow. You've got to be flexible. You've got to be reflexive. You've got to be able to uh, be fluid enough to go from fight to fight to fight. I understand that. I get that. But there is value, I believe, in looking back on occasion at some of the fights you've been involved in, some of the positions you've taken, some of the strategies you've undertaken, to at least say, hey, in the long term, did this work? Did it not work? Did we accomplish what we wanted to? Did we not? Well, I was struck a few days ago by one of these opportunities really presenting itself right in front of us. CNN, the Communist News Network, I'm sorry, the Cable News Network, recently ran a little piece, a little special on the legacy of Barack Obama. It was hosted by this Fareed Zakaria guy. Incidentally, this is off topic here, but have you ever noticed, have you ever noticed that like almost everyone on CNN who's a host or a presenter, everyone has like some foreign name or some foreign accent. There's, you know, you're Fareed Zakaria or you're Christine Amanpour or whoever else and I swear, almost every time you turn on that station, you know, you hear someone who talks like this. You know, you don't hear someone who speaks American English or has an American name or who looks like an American or sounds like an American. They're they're they're, they're the minority over there. It's amazing. I and I'm not saying that says anything bad or good about CNN. It's just something I observe. Something that's noticeably different about them than than any other cable news company. It's almost like they're going out of their way. It would seem to. Keep Americans off the air, or, or those who those who sound or look or, or believe like Americans off the air. I don't know. Maybe that's another discussion for another time. Anyway, 
they did this show about the legacy of Barack Obama, and they 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 uh, interviewed the soon to be ex president. The they interviewed the long national nightmare who is about to be over, to use Gerald Ford's words. They interviewed Obama, and they asked him about kind of what his disappointments were. And Obama said this, and I quote, If you ask me where has been the one area where I feel that I've been most frustrated and most stymied, it is the fact that the United States of America is the one advanced nation on earth in which we do not have sufficient common sense gun safety laws. End quote. And I know most people probably heard that, if they heard it at all, and it kind of went in one ear and out the other, and it really probably didn't mean more to them than just the reflections of a soon-to-be ex-president. And it didn't, to some people anyway, it probably didn't seem to be much more than just a mundane policy issue. But as I heard him say that, and I actually thought back to the last six, seven, eight years it struck me that that was a very huge thing. There's no doubt that Barack Obama during his time in office was a devout enemy of our Second Amendment rights. He publicly was very critical about guns in America, about our gun culture, about our gun laws, about the pervasiveness of guns in our culture and in our country, the availability of them what guns are out there, the use of them, etc. He seldom missed an opportunity to criticize America as it stands today and its relationship with guns. He's very assertive and very aggressive about that. And yes, he often did try to take measures and take steps and propose or, or, or at least... Uh, Suggest because he can't propose legislation, but suggest legislation that would have further eroded our Second Amendment rights. And the funny thing is, 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 as we've gone through here, as we've gone through his presidency, that all the Obama supporters are so quick to say, I thought you all said he was going to take away your guns. Well, he didn't take away your guns, did he, huh? Well, no, he didn't take away our guns, but it wasn't for a lack of trying. And that statement he just made to Fareed Zakaria proved it. It just proved that, yes, he was trying to take away our guns. But he didn't succeed, did he? Now, I want you to stop and think about something. Why did Barack Obama not succeed at taking away our guns? Or at the very least, trying to make more severe cuts or more severe interference with the Second Amendment than already exists. Why, why did that happen? Why, were, why did he try this and fail? Why did he fail? Largely because of the American people. Because indeed, I think to some extent, Obama's own statements and actions on the subject may have had the opposite effect that he intended, and it, and it may have served to make people more familiar with their Second Amendment rights and to consider their Second Amendment rights perhaps more than some of them had before. It has often been said that Barack Obama has been the best gun salesman in America for the last hundred years. I can't say that's wrong. Because we would see, we would see all of this crime in our urban areas. We would see all of these violent protests in the places like Ferguson and Baltimore and New York and countless other places by this point. We would see all the terrorist attacks too numerous to mention across this nation. And as we saw that, more and more American citizens thought to themselves, well, I, I'm going to have to have some way to defend myself and my family should the proverbial crap hit the proverbial fan. And while all of this is going on, they're hearing Barack Obama talk about how we need less guns in society how we need more uh, hurdles towards people defending themselves, and, and it didn't seem to make sense. And so, you would see a sharp uptick in concealed carry permit, permit applications in those states which allow it. You would see more states that would begin to allow it. You would see, particularly around Christmas time the last couple of years, 
record numbers of background checks for gun purchases, ignoring the fact that the fact that we have to have a background check for a gun purchase is completely unconstitutional. We'll set that aside for now. But in any event, that was a mechanism to kind of determine or kind of hint, give us a strong hint anyway, in terms of gun purchases. You would see booming business, pun sort of intended, at gun counters and gun shops and gun shows. I can tell you just going to the local gun shops here for the last two or three years, they have been consistently busy. You go down to your local gun range and you would see it packed, particularly on the weekends. You would see new gun ranges popping up all over your town or country. We certainly saw that here in the St. Louis area. So all of those things happen. I think they did have the opposite effect. The American people did acquaint themselves better with their Second Amendment rights than perhaps they ever had before uh, because of Barack Obama. But more than that, there was another element very significant element that kept Barack Obama from getting what he wanted in terms of destroying our gun rights. And that element was very simply Congress. They refused to bring about the legislation that he was demanding. They refused to consider legislation that his Democrats wanted to implement. They wouldn't let it get out of committee, or they they would water it down to where it couldn't get a vote, or they would do any number of tricks. And I want you to stop and think. On a general sense, we've been told for the last several years that this Republican-controlled Congress has been an obstructionist body. They haven't gotten anything done. They haven't done the work of the American people. How many times have you heard that? from journalists and politicians and commentators and academics and whomever, you would hear that refrain from one end to the other. You certainly heard it a lot during this presidential campaign, that it was a do-nothing Congress. And no doubt, Congress's favorability ratings have been at horrific lows for the last several years. We've been told that this Congress did nothing, that they were just obstructionists, that they did not do the will of the American people. But take a step back. And look at what they accomplished here. You had a sitting American president who was doing his dead-level best to destroy our Second Amendment, take away our rights to own whatever firearms we wanted, and yes, perhaps even take away your guns. And this obstructionist Congress was a bulwark that kept that from happening. Now, for all the criticism that they have been levied over these last several years, I think this this is a case where we need to take a moment, we need to take a step back, and we need to applaud them and praise them for their work. Congress did the right thing. I have often mentioned on this show a quote from the great president, Calvin Coolidge, who once said, It is more important to kill bad bills than to pass good ones. Well, that's exactly what they did in this case. They prevented the bad bills, the bad gun bills that Obama and Democrats wanted to put forth. They prevented it from happening. And it resulted in one of the major areas that Barack Obama wanted to make significant movement in. They resulted in that not happening. It resulted in his biggest disappointment. That is no small feat. That is no small accomplishment. For those who say the Republican Congress didn't, quote, do anything, well, here is your proof that they did something quite important and quite profound indeed. That Congress, that obstructionist Congress, that supposed do-nothing Congress, protected your gun rights. That Congress protected your ability to purchase the firearm or firearms that you feel necessary and that you see fit to defend your family. That do-nothing obstructionist Congress kept this president from taking your guns. And by the way, it didn't stop there. That obstructionist do-nothing Congress had similar accomplishments when it came to cap and trade, attempts at amnesty, so-called tax reform that would have soaked the rich even worse. 
Stopping these disastrous ideas took constant work and effort from this Congress, and stopping them ultimately was a tremendous accomplishment. Yes, it was a very defensive effort, but it was a successful one, and it was a defensive effort from which we all have benefited. Preventing bad things from happening is still doing something. We would never say that the defensive coordinator on a football team doesn't do anything. No, he does quite a lot. And this Congress did quite a lot of value, quite a lot of merit, in stopping these ideas from taking hold. And I personally think that we ought to give this Congress, much maligned as they've been, a significant degree of praise for what they've accomplished. Good job, Congress.